Hey, welcome to the first session of the My Bible School, uh, My Bible Study Workshop. Uh, so this is um, a part of My Bible School, uh, which is a website designed to help people study the Bible and uh, grow and engage in their faith. And so I'm excited to have you here. And um, hopefully if you um, are new to uh, My Bible School or to anything that we uh, do here through, through this website, I'd encourage you to connect with us in a couple of ways. Uh, first, you could... Um, go and make sure that you like the Facebook page and make sure that you set up the notifications so that you get notified every time that we have a new post. Uh, and then also, uh, I just started a YouTube channel for My Bible School, so you can find that by just going to YouTube and uh, searching My Bible School, and you'll find it. Um, the main thing that uh, you'll find on the YouTube channel right now is uh, what we call the, the Passage of the Week. Uh, and the Passage of the Week is uh, a Bible study that goes out every week. Uh, on Mondays, uh, I send out um, a study guide with uh, a worksheet that you can download that has a few guiding questions for the passage that we're studying and some helpful resources that are free on, on the internet, but maybe you didn't know about. Uh, and these will help you um, study the passage. Uh, last year, it worked through uh, the whole Bible. It covered sort of one chapter from uh, nearly every book in the Bible. And, and this year, we're, we're switching uh, speeds a little bit and focusing on the Gospel of Mark. Uh, and so far, we're not even through chapter one, and it's been a lot of fun. And so you can catch up uh, either through the videos on the Facebook page or on the YouTube channel. And also, another way to stay in um, in connection with what's going on with my Bible school is to join the email list. And on our Facebook page, there's a sign up button right there that you can do uh, to make sure that you're a part of of the email list so that you always get notifications about what's happening with my Bible school. Uh, well, I'm excited for tonight, uh, for this next couple of weeks, actually. There's going to be uh, four sessions that we're going to go through that will um, hopefully, I think, uh, really help reframe the way that you think about Bible study. And I wanted to uh, make sure that you're aware of what those dates are. So um, the, the My Bible Study Workshop is going to happen um, tonight and then on Thursday night uh, and then next Tuesday and next Thursday. So there's four sessions. All of the sessions will be at 8 p.m. Central Time uh, right here on Facebook Live on our page. Uh, and so you can always find it right there. And the replays will be up on uh, the YouTube channel by the next day. Uh, and so I'm really excited to, to go through this. Uh, I, I love uh, to study the Bible. I um, have spent the vast majority of my life doing just that. I grew up in a pastor's home. I've gone to Bible college, and right now I'm actually studying um, I'm studying to get my PhD in the Old Testament at Baylor University. Uh, and so I have made it uh, my life's mission to study the Bible and to engage my faith through the study of the Bible. And one thing that I love is helping people understand the depths of the Bible uh, in a way that maybe they hadn't known before or hadn't seen. And so that's what my Bible school is all about. And that's what um, this workshop is all about is sort of uh, just setting some groundwork for you so that you can sort of reframe the way that you think about studying the Bible. And so that you can uh, hopefully sort of unlock the Bible for yourself and fall more in love with it. Uh, so tonight our session is, uh, is the first of four. And it's about identifying the goal of Bible study. Okay, and it's going to seem a little bit basic at first. But as with all skills in life, if you don't go back to the basics and make sure you have a good foundation, then you can find yourself way off base, uh, which is what a lot of people struggle with uh, when they study the Bible is they actually, uh, they think they know the goal, but they head in a completely different direction. Uh, the next session that we'll go through is about how to achieve that goal. It's going to be uh, hopefully really uh, a really helpful framework for you. And then in the third session, we're going to take some practical steps to implement what we've been learning. And in the last session, we're going to get another big overview look at what it takes to study the Bible in depth in your own life. Uh, I'm really excited to, to walk through this with you. Uh, if you uh, know someone that might like this, make sure that you let them know about the workshop uh, that they can join in on and uh, invite them to it. And it'll be it'll be fun. All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, so what is the goal of studying the Bible? <laughs> now, um, Hopefully, uh, you are not going to be too shocked by this, uh, but the goal of studying the Bible 
is to become more like Jesus. Okay. And obviously we're speaking from, uh, I'm speaking from a Christian perspective and that uh, shouldn't be a shock to anyone. Um, so the goal of studying the Bible is to become more like Jesus. Now you may be saying, oh, I knew that. Uh, and so what are we even doing here? <laughs> it's actually really important to recognize that that goal requires something of us. And it requires us to take the next step and to ask the next question. Uh, and the question is, how does studying the Bible help us become more like Jesus? You know, there are the Gospels which talk about Jesus. And, and that makes sense, how that could help us become more like Jesus. And then the letters in the New Testament, that makes sense, how that could help us become more like Jesus. But then there's whole parts of the Old Testament uh, that, um, you know, aren't prophecy that you're used to hearing be about Jesus. And then even, even besides just the Old Testament, there's sections in the New Testament uh, that talk about all sorts of ethical issues uh, that may seem to not have much to do with Jesus at all, but have more to do with uh, just how to live a good life. And so the question for us is, how does studying the Bible actually help us become more like Jesus? And so we're going to explore that question in a little bit more depth tonight. So we need to understand that there's a few issues that we face when we sit down to study the Bible. Is, is the first is that the Bible can be confusing. Uh, and I know that that is sort of um, not a popular thing to say, like when you're sitting at church. If you've uh, grown up in the church or maybe you're new to the church, especially if you're new or came to know Jesus later in life, you may be sitting in a small group or a Sunday school, if your church has that, uh, and you may be, uh, everyone around you may seem comfortable with the story going on, you know, where uh, Samson uh, finally gets his strength back and he knocks down this whole building. And everyone may be comfortable with that story. And you may be sitting there thinking, but he just killed all of these people. And how is that? How is that supposed to make me more like Jesus? And, and, and you may find the Bible confusing, and, and then there's all sorts of other passages. I mean, just open any of the prophetic books. And, and you may find the Bible confusing. And yet, if we're not careful, we'll keep that to ourselves because we think everyone else understands the Bible. And so we don't, don't want to acknowledge that it's actually a confusing book and that it requires really serious study. And it requires us to study it with other people to understand it. And so the first thing we need to acknowledge when we study the Bible is that it's not always straightforward. There's metaphors. There's, you know, the book of Revelation or the book of Ezekiel. I mean, these these books can be difficult to understand. And so it requires us to slow down and think about it. So that's one of the issues that we face. Another issue is that when we don't know how to study the Bible, we end up making one of two mistakes. Number one is we just go back to familiar passages. Uh, and familiar passages are great. Uh, they really, uh, they can be like food for your soul, right? Uh, you, so you can find yourself going back to John three sixteen, or you can find yourself uh, going to different moments and, and passages in Paul's letters because you feel safe there and you feel like you understand what the Bible's about when you read those passages. Um, and if you, but if you don't know how to study the Bible, then you'll just get stuck with those passages. And you're actually, your view of God and your view of the faith will be misshapen. And it'll still be good. It'll still be, you know, based on Jesus. But there's whole sections of scripture that, that you just don't know what to do with. And so you either go through, uh, through those sections being confused when you read them, or you make the second mistake and you just end up never studying the Bible. You don't even, you don't even read or study the parts that you might understand because you just have gotten so confused through it all. And, and this is not something that we want for you. I want you uh, to be confident when you open the Bible, not that you'll know the answer, but that you'll know that there's a process you can follow and that there are people around you that you can ask questions with, uh, that you can get closer to understanding what the Bible is all about and how it all connects to Jesus. Okay, now, I, that is is the issues that we face when we're trying to study the Bible to become more like Jesus. But there are a couple of uh, approaches that people take. So our main question was, how do we study the Bible in a way, how does studying the Bible bring us closer to Jesus? 
And people have different uh, approaches. They have different ways of taking this. And, and some of them are not helpful <laughs> because they're incomplete. Uh, they latch on to good ideas, but they don't account for all the scripture. And so I want to walk through three common approaches that people take to the Bible uh, that will lead you to make some serious mistakes in studying the Bible and will actually sort of handicap your ability to understand it uh, all together. So uh, common approach number one is to treat the Bible as a rule book. Um, now, you may, you may have done this and you may know people who do this, that um, the Bible has lots of commands, uh, it has lots of interest in the way that we live our lives, right? It's how God communicates to us and, and God desires that we live a certain way in the world. Uh, and so that is one way that people approach the Bible is as a rule book. Now, what's interesting is that this correctly understands that the Bible teaches ethics, so this is, it isn't wrong that there are some rules in the Bible, right? You shouldn't kill anyone. That's a rule that's in the Bible for sure. Uh, and so this approach correctly understands that, but it has some shortfalls. Uh, number one, it, it can't incorporate huge portions of the Bible that have nothing to do with rules, right? It just, it doesn't know what to do with that. If you want the Bible to be a rule book, uh, you're going to find yourself confused when you find that the, the law right? Uh, so there's a section of the Old Testament called the law. It's the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And there are plenty of laws in there, but that's the part that most people skip over in Leviticus and the sections of Exodus and Numbers and even Deuteronomy. But there's huge passages and portions of the law that are actually just stories. And if you're looking for the Bible to be a rule book, uh, you'll find yourself confused because often there are not rules. Often there are stories that are vague, uh, that are not uh, clear on exactly what the message is, but they're invitations to explore what the principle is going on. But they're not necessarily rules. And so it's really important to recognize that, that if we treat the Bible as a rule book, we cannot incorporate all of the types of literature we have. The next thing is that... Um, Approaching the Bible as a rule book does not adequately explain why we follow some rules and not others. Just flip open to Leviticus, uh, read some of the rules, and you will notice very quickly that there are rules that we do not, we do not follow. Um, and often people will say, well, we've come into the new covenant with Jesus, and that explains it. But it, when you really begin to study that, it becomes very tricky as to which rules we need to follow and why. I mean, a classic is there's so many people who debate of whether or not tithing is a rule, a command of the New Testament or not. Uh, and it becomes this weird debate. Uh, but if we're looking for the Bible to be a rule book, then we're going to have to wrestle with these and we're never going to be able to like fully explain why we follow some of the rules and others we don't. And so I think that's one of the reasons why um, following the Bible as a rule book is, is not good enough. You have to do more than that. And then finally, just like I said, we end up ignoring huge chunks of the Bible that don't seem to be rules. And so that can cause us really to ignore uh, really large portions of what God's word is all about. And so we need to be careful and we need to recognize that the Bible is not just a rule book, though there are certainly uh, implications and, and principles for the way we live our life. Okay, the second approach is to approach the Bible as a question and answer book. And this is maybe a popular one to you. And you've probably heard people say like that the Bible, every there's the Bible has every answer to the issues in the world. Oh, well, yes and no, right? Like Jesus obviously is the solution to the problems that we face and the hope that we have in Jesus and the hope that one day God will make all things right. That's all found in the Bible. And, and obviously we can study the Bible and we can get principles for how to live and act in the world. And that's actually what we'll talk about in the coming sessions. But it's not so straightforward as that. And, and then often when people think of the Bible as a question and answer book, they mean something even more. They think that whatever question we have, we can bring that to the Bible. And, and if we just look long enough and look in the right places, then we can find an answer to our questions. And I just don't think that's quite the way 
that the Bible works, but this approach does correctly understand that the Bible addresses major issues and teaches principles that apply throughout time and to all of our lives. And so the Bible certainly answers major questions for our lives and we and for our lives and we need to recognize that. So there are, certainly is some uh, part of this approach that is correct. But it's not enough. Again, just like the previous approach, it doesn't incorporate poetry, narrative. It doesn't know what to do with portions of scripture that may seem to answer the question in two different ways. Like famously, there are proverbs where one says, you know, if you talk to a fool, you're you're a fool. If you don't talk to a fool, you're a fool. It says it right back and forth. And so the Bible is not just a question and answer book, though it answers many important questions. Another problem with this approach is that we end up asking modern questions that the Bible was not designed to answer. And this is a really tricky issue, but we we need to recognize that there are certainly life principles that we can draw from the Bible that will help us in all sorts of areas. But we can't ask modern questions and expect an ancient document to give us specific answers. Uh, And this obviously comes into play in a new number of ways that the Old Testament and the New Testament talks about the world is that it uses metaphors and imagery and pictures that are that are from these ancient societies. And that's good because God communicates to us in the ways that we can understand throughout time. And he communicated that way to people um, living in a long time long ago in a way that they can understand. So we need to learn what questions they were asking. And then we can begin to build the principles that will help us live our lives today. Okay, and then the next thing is again, just with the other approach, as as with the other approaches, we end up gravitating towards texts that we think are useful. We end up picking and choosing the passages that we think answer the questions that we're that we're asking of the Bible, and we end up ignoring huge portions that maybe contradict the answer that we think we've arrived at. And so we need to recognize that though the Bible answers questions, it's not a question and answer book. And finally, the the Bible is a history book. And maybe this isn't an issue for you, but uh, to be honest, it's an issue for me uh, to treat the Bible as a history book. Now, this this approach correctly understands that the Bible is an ancient document, that it's written thousands of years ago by many different people over the course of more than a thousand years, and that it's a very ancient book that it deserves to be studied as history. But, um, But this approach can ignore the spiritual component it can actually can ignore the the sort of the purpose of scripture, which is to become more like Jesus. And so that's not what we want to do. Uh, and then also, it doesn't address the application of the Bible to modern life. I, I love the history of the Bible, and I think that it is worthwhile to study the Bible's history. And I think it's really important. And I don't think we can understand the Bible without history and without understanding its history. But at some point, we also have to bring it into conversation with the um, spiritual questions and the application that we have to our faith. And so history, uh, the Bible is not just a history book, though it records and teaches us a lot about history. So those are common approaches. And now I want to talk about a better approach to the Bible. So if these three approaches, the Bible as a rule book, the Bible as a question and answer book, and the Bible as a history book. If those three approaches are sort of hitting at something that's important, but not getting to the point that we need, not covering everything, then the way that we study the Bible needs to match and needs to function with the shape of the Bible, right? And so our approach needs to match the function, um, needs to function with the shape of the Bible. That's what we are after. And uh, that means that However we approach the Bible, however we approach studying the Bible, it needs to be able to handle narrative or stories. It needs to be able to uh, deal with the poetry. It needs to be able to deal with Jesus' parables and the Gospels themselves and Paul's letters and the other early church writers, their, their letters, and these weird books we call Apocalypses, Revelation, and the end of Daniel, and huge portions of Ezekiel and the prophets. Uh, we need to know what to do with these books and our goal in studying the Bible and how we go about becoming more like Jesus when we study the Bible needs to function 
with all of these different types of literature. And that's a tall task, but one that I think we can accomplish. Our goal in study of the Bible needs to, like the rule book approach suggests, deal with ethical implications. We need to think through what the Bible calls us to do and how it calls us to live in the world. And that has all sorts of ramifications for the way that we live our lives, um, not only individually, but within our communities and our countries. And then also we need to recognize that the Bible still does have answers to life's major questions and that there are historical details in the text. So our, our studying of the Bible needs to be able to interact with each of these issues. We don't want to get rid of the rules that are there in the Bible and that we need to live by. We don't want to get rid of the answers that the Bible uh, gives to the questions we have. And we don't want to ignore the history of the text. And so our goal and the way that we go about accomplishing our goal needs to match that. And so I think that what we need to do, so after years of, of studying the Bible, I think what we need to do is to approach the Bible as the story of the world in which we play a small part. I think we need to approach the Bible as the story of the world in which we play a small part. Now, obviously, if you know anything about history, the Bible does not cover the history of the world, right? It, it talks about creation, yes, but then it moves and watches and follows a family that becomes a nation that then eventually focuses in on one person, Jesus, and then eventually goes out to the rest of the world. But we don't get the history of, you know, the Native Americans or whatever was happening in the Far East and China and Asia. We don't understand what's happening in, on whole continents uh, during the time of the Bible. But, but I still think we need to consider the Bible to be the story of the world and what that means is that, that the way that we make sense of the world, the way we view the world, needs to be informed by the Bible. So the Bible, we need to read the Bible as our worldview. And then we need to see ourselves as little parts in that story. When we play just a small part, and we need to find ourselves in that story. And that is going to have huge implications for the way that we study the Bible and we approach it. It invites us to explore all parts of the Bible. We can look at the poetry, we can look at the narrative, we can look at uh, these apocalypses, and we can see that all of these are helping us understand a way to look at the world. And I think it's really important to recognize that. And it also challenges us to consider the Bible's history. If this is a story, then we need to know what was happening and why the story is told the way that it is. And then finally, we need to think about the implications of this story. What does the story do for our lives and what does it call us to be? Uh, and I think that I think that incorporates all of the instincts of the three approaches we talked about, but doesn't fall into the same, the same traps and mistakes. So what are the possibilities of studying the Bible? Right? What are the possibilities? Tonight we've talked about common approaches that people take and mistakes that that people fall into and i remember i talked about how you know you may sit in a bible study and everyone else may seem like they know what's going on or you may sit there on a sunday morning and people may be you know nodding their head in agreement as if they really understand why the pastor is saying what he's saying based off of the scripture and you may sit there confused what could change for you if you knew how to study the bible better well, I think that in those situations, uh, these you could feel differently. You could feel more confident. You could feel confident that uh, asking questions is the right thing to do when you're confused by something in the Bible, that you need to explore it. You need to explore it with other people. You could be more confident that when you sit down to study the Bible, you know that the goal is to become more like Jesus. And that means that I need to understand this whole story and how it sets up a worldview in a way that I can think about the, the history of the world and the way that I can think about what's going on and what really, really matters. If you learned how to study the Bible like this, if you learned to approach it like this, you could learn to love the Bible. Now, you may love parts of the Bible, but you may, like some people, uh, not love all of the Bible because, you know, the running joke is that um, Bible reading plans die in Leviticus. <laughs> 
Well, if you learn to see that Leviticus and Hebrews and Jesus all map onto each other, if you learn to see it in this way, then all of a sudden it opens up to you and you might actually learn to love Leviticus. And I know that's a tall, a tall task. The next thing is that you could unlock whole sections of scripture. You may have spent a lot of years of your life reading the Bible and ignoring whole sections, not because you thought they weren't important, but because you just didn't know what to do with them. I mean, when was the last time you heard a sermon on the book of Ezekiel that didn't have to do with dry bones, right? There's whole passages of scripture that we don't ever dive into because we feel intimidated by. And if you learn to study the Bible better, then you could unlock whole sections of scripture for yourself. And as a result, you could feel more confident in your faith. Like that's just the way that it is. I, the more that I study the Bible, the more that I see the beauty of it, the more that I, I am personally more convinced of my faith and I'm more confident. And you know, there are still questions that I have and things that I'm studying in the Bible, but, but I'm more confident than ever that this is God's word and that it communicates something beautiful to us about the life and the love of Jesus uh, that is transforming for our, us and for our world. So in a summary, the goal of studying the Bible is to become more like Jesus. And that seems basic, but as we've uncovered, it's anything but basic. It's actually really important to see that when we study the Bible to become more like Jesus, we need to avoid certain pitfalls. And instead, we need to study the Bible like the story of the world in which we play a small part. And then finally, we've talked about how this way of approaching the Bible will open up the possibility that we might actually love studying and reading the Bible. And that could be something quite cool for our lives. So what's next? Okay, so we're bringing this to a close tonight. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, session number two is on Thursday at 8 p.m. And so make sure that you join that. It'll be right here back on Facebook Live. And we're going to be talking about how the Bible is the story of the world. And I'll share a framework that uh, will help you understand, uh, that helps me understand how the Bible uh, worked. It's helped me uh, tremendously over the years. It's been one of the most influential things uh, that I've uncovered about how to study the Bible and how to think of how it all points towards Jesus and how um, I can actually live in light of what's going on in the Bible. It's been incredibly freeing to me. I think it will be to you. Um, other people who have uh, gone through this next session that I'm going to talk to you about on Thursday night or like really sort of had light bulbs go off in their heads like, oh, this is how you can look at the Bible and how you can find how we living thousands of years after the last book of the New Testament was written can actually live in the flow with what the scripture is teaching and how we can actually approach the Bible. I think it's going to be massively helpful to you. I hopefully I'll see you there. Um, and, um, and just as a way of reminder, you can find the replay of this session here on Facebook or on the YouTube channel. You can just go over there and subscribe to that. Uh, or you can visit, you can also visit mybibleschool.com and join the email list so that you always know uh, what's going on. And I'd love for you to tell a friend who might be interested in studying the Bible and tell them about the next session. I have one thing for you uh, tonight in case... Um, you want to go a little bit deeper on this topic, I'm going to, in the comments, I'm going to leave a link um, that is to a worksheet that could help you uh, go a little bit deeper on this topic. And so you can download that. It's got some thoughts and reflections for you. And hopefully you'll find those helpful and it'll just help you um, dive a little bit deeper into our topic for tonight. Well, that's it. Um, hopefully you have a great uh, couple of days and I'll see you back on Wednesday or on Thursday night at 8 p.m. And uh, until then, I'll see you next time.